What's up? I'm Brad. I'm Barry, and we are Three Days Grace, and you are watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, Grahamid here from Loudwire, and I'm with Brad and Barry of Three Days Grace. Thank you guys so much for coming. Wikipedia fact or fiction. Went under your pages, uh, printed out some stuff. Some of it may be true, some of it may be false. Okay. We'll let you uh, correct, shall All we? Right. All right. First up, uh, it says Three Days Grace, formed in 1992, originally under the name Groundswell. Fact. That was a fact, the Definitely first name. Definitely a fact, yeah. No other names before that? Um, no. Jupiter effect? Well, we, we, yeah, we were a cover band for a while as the Who'd Jupiter. Cover? We covered all kinds of stuff, man. Okay. Classic rock, new rock. Uh, we were called the Jupiter Effect for a while, which is a horrible name. What is the Jupiter Effect? I have no idea. It was actually, <laughs> you know what's funny is we were, were we three days grace then? No, we were still groundswell. So we travel up to these cottage, you know, the cottage country in Ontario, and we do cover sets, like three hours of covers, and we'd stay for the weekend, but we actually stole, we didn't want to be groundswell up there because we thought, you know, it would affect our original yeah, band or whatever, but anyways, so we stole the name from another band we knew from Peterborough <laughs> and used it up in the cottage country. <laughs> you, you stole the name Three Days Grace no, or, or Groundswell? Oh, that's yeah. the Jupiter Effect. All right, that was some other band. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, uh, it says the Three Days Grace band name uh, stands for a sense of urgency with the question being, could someone change something in their life if they had to, if they only had three days to do so? True. True? True. What, what kind of scenarios kind of in your mind when coming up with that band name? Well, actually, to be honest, I heard it in uh, business class or something in, in school. I heard the three days grace period, you know, is the, is the period to pay back your debts. You have three days to pay your debt or else, whatever that means. But it also, you know, it does have that sense of urgency of, oh shit, I better figure this out, you know? So uh, it seemed to just fit the music at the time and it stuck, you know? That's, a, that's going back to like 97, 96, yeah. All right, well, three days is also the amount of time that someone gets sent to a psych ward if they get 51 50 ah. So I kind of had, <laughs> had my own. Uh, right. That's cool. My own idea of that. That's, that's actually cooler yeah, than like that. that. I'm, I'm can, you, can, you go, <laughs> can you go on there and change it to that? Can we use that? I will. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, so it says around the time that the first album became a mainstream success, uh, frontman uh, Adam Gontier became abusive and angry. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. False. <laughs> False? Yeah, he, False. He, he's not an abusive guy. He's not, no. Okay. No. 2006. Three Days Grace performed a special show where Adam went for his own rehab. Mm -hmm. There was an audience of about 250 people, including patients of the place. True. True? Yeah, absolutely. What's, what's that scene like? It was pretty, you know, it was pretty a, a neat, that was a neat thing to do. I think just, you know, after he finished his stint there, to go back and do that for the people was really cool. And then, you know, he did like a Q&A &A with the, the patients and stuff. And oh, wow. Yeah, okay. it, was, it was pretty impressive, man. And it's, it's humbling, you know, when, when you do something like that. Yeah, I'm sure they appreciated it, just yeah. anyone coming in and entertaining them, you know. Yeah, it was definitely cool. 2011, uh, RCA Music announced it was disbanding, uh, disbanding Jive Records, Arista Records, and J Records, mm -hmm. moved all the artists to RCA Records, including yourself. So was that kind of a, a chaotic period, or did it not affect you too much? Uh, well, it's always hard to see, uh, you know, people you've worked with and, and grown with, uh, you know, get laid off or fired, or you know, that's that's kind of hard. Um, and Jive was a cool label, you know. They were they were independent when we signed with them. You know, they okay. were one of the only independent labels left that were that were doing big business, and um, it was kind of strange because they had all the pop. They had uh, Britney and uh, I remember NSYNC that. And, uh, we were really the only rock band. Yeah, at the, time. at the time we were the only rock band on Jive. So, um, yeah, you know, it's always hard to see to to see everything go through shifts, but that's the nature of the business these mm -hmm. days, man. It's so, so essentially, it was a buyout. And they I guess, yeah, yeah. It didn't. I mean, we were I fortunate though too, because we did have some of the you know, really good people yeah. that managed to stay too. We lost yeah. some people we were close with, close with mm -hmm. as well, but you know, yeah. It's Kind of one of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, Transit of Venus, uh, released on June 5th, 2012. 
the same day as Venus's visible transit across the sun, which is extremely rare mm -hmm. in occurrence. Mm -hmm. So with that, when did you find out that it would happen, and how did you realize it would line up with a potential album release? It was, uh, how did that come about? We, uh, I, know, I remember we, t we thought about this in Miami, about that Miami trip we were talking about. Yeah. Um, I think it started out as a, a fan said, started a rumor that the, the album was called Transit of Venus. Yeah, it was bizarre. It was really weird. Okay. And we were already in this path of what was going on, yeah. just to see the fan start talking about this. And and it was really bizarre, yeah. And so, yeah. So then we just thought, you know, it's such a, such a cool event and such, a, such an event that makes you feel, you know, very small, you know. Sure. And I think uh, it just seemed to coincide with what we were talking about on the record at the time. But, uh, yeah, it was kind of strange how it all came about. Wow. Yeah. All right. F f good idea, fan. And also, just for uh, anyone who's curious, the next transit of Venus will happen in December 2117. 2117, I if guess. If you're around, check 2117. it. 2117. In 100 years, you know, if you're still around, check it out. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. We can freeze ourselves. Yeah. The song Painkiller. Uh, the song is about how, how everybody is addicted to something. Yeah. True. True. Mm. Yeah, it's it's kind of taking the perspective of that thing that taunts you uh, to keep coming back, you know, taunting you to come back and, and, and want more, and whether that's drugs or whatever, you know, alcohol, sex, food, anything, sex, yeah. whatever your thing is, you know. Yeah. So so for you, that I'm guessing would be music. That's true. Addiction to, yeah. with well, you know, addic that's not a bad addiction, obviously, but and chocolate. Chocolate's good. I can't stop once I start. <laughs> it's one of those things, you know. It's I binge, so yeah. that's that's my painkiller. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Thank you guys so much for dropping by. I appreciate Thanks, it. Cheers, buddy. Thank you very much. Uh, Human out now. Check it out. Three days grace.